Uh, thank you, Pashwar, for giving me this time. Uh, it's been some time since uh, I had this opportunity to share uh, the word of God. Uh, without taking much time, let's quickly uh, uh, turn to Psalms 50, uh, 76. I'll read. God is renowned in, in Judah. In Israel, his name is great. His tent is in Salim, his dwelling place in Zion. There he broke the flashing arrows, the shields and the sword, the weapons of war. You are radiant with light, more majestic than mountains rich with game. The valiant lie plunder, they sleep, their last sleep. Not one of the warriors can lift their hands. At your rebuke, God of Jacob, both horse and the chariot lie still. It is you alone who are to be feared, who can stand before you when you are angry. From heaven you pronounce judgment and the land feared and was quiet. When you God rose up to judge, to save all the afflicted of the land, surely your wrath against mankind brings you praise and the survivors of your wrath are restrained. Make vows to the Lord your God and fulfill them. Let all the neighboring lands bring gifts to the one to be feared. He breaks the spirit of rulers. He is feared by the kings of the earth. Thank you, Lord. Uh, this Psalms uh, is written uh, as I understand uh, one of the chief uh, musicians and the uh, choir leader Asaf during his time with King Ezekiel and uh, uh, to understand this more uh, you have to go back a little bit into when uh, King Ezekiel was ruling the land of Israel especially Judah and uh, uh, if we'll, uh, I would like to uh, take you to the book of Second Chronicles, chapter twenty-nine, and also uh, uh, Isaiah chapter uh, thirty-eight, uh, thirty-seven. So just keep this aside, and uh, we'll go back and forth. Uh, Second Chronicles chapter 29, uh, I'll read uh, chapter 29, verses 1 to 3. Ezekiel was 25 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 29 years. His mother's name was Abijah, daughter of Zechariah. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, just as his father David has done. In the first month of the first year of his reign, he opened the doors of the temple of the Lord and repaired them. He brought in the priest and his Levites, assembled them in the square of the east side. Listen to me, Levites, consecrate yourself now and consecrate the temple of the Lord, the Lord of your ancestors. Remove all defilements from the sanctuary. So basically, I won't, uh, this is a big Chapter. We had to read a couple of chapters to understand this, uh, to understand the Psalms. But I will quickly uh, just want to give a nutshell of what happened behind the Psalms uh, and that what motivated Asaf to write this. Uh, during those times, uh, before uh, Ezekiel came, uh, the, became the king, the previous king, whoever ruled, was, was, not, was not doing what David has followed. Uh, and a lot of immoral things was happening uh, in, the, in the kingdom and a lot of the high places where idolatries was worshipped and God was very angry with the, the kingdom and the way uh, they followed the rule in Israel. And, uh, and, and when Ezekiel became the king, uh, he quickly noticed what was wrong and he straight away went to the temple 
and removed. He basically rallied all the people. He brought in the priest, he brought in the Levites, he brought in the, all the important officials. And then he basically rallied everyone. And then he uh, opened the doors, which was closed. They opened the worship places all, which was closed. He opened it up and cleaned it off, removed the idolatries, consecrated it, and give instructions to start the worship back again. So we can read that. And what there was some processes that he did and some things changed after that. And then when uh, that's what I, uh, as of rights, God, he given instructions all across Israel uh, to open the doors of worship. And as of rights, God is renowned in Judah. In Israel, his name is great. Uh, the tent is in Salem. His dwelling place is Zion. So again, back, uh, coming back to the same place where God is renowned. Again, Asaf, uh, I mean, uh, Hezekiel gave instructions to open the door and he has rallied the people, rallied the Levites, rallied the priest uh, to come back to the worship places where it was closed and messages were given for people to come back and and do the worship there back again. So Asaf writes in his, uh, in, his, in his poem, in his music about this in Psalm 76 verses one and two. And what happens is that uh, uh, when we read uh, uh, Second Chronicles uh, chapter, nice chapter, yeah, Second Chronicles chapter, uh, on the last words, uh, on the last words, it also says that when they started uh, this process, uh, people are purified. There is holiness coming into the place where there is holiness coming into the kingdom, the uh, the priest and the people. There's a spiritual revival happening in the place. Uh, and uh, it was all gone before before the previous king who, who was ruling, it was all gone away. But now when the temple was open, the purification process happening in the temple and thereafter it also uh, uh, derails into the people. And then uh, all the people of that region uh, they are experiencing a spiritual, a special spiritual revival happening in the people. And that's because, lead, uh, and that's basically that happens there. We can see that. And when there is holiness happening in the, uh, happening when the temple is restored, the things, the places of worship is restored, there is holiness gradually happening in the, the minds and the hearts of the people. And during, and when the, there is holiness hap, happening, everything is start to take place. Uh, uh, there, there's one verse, it says that God uh, started to bless the people as well. Uh, spiritually, he started to bless. And also, uh, he started to bless. Monet, uh, financially, also, the, the place is getting blessed. The kingdom is getting blessed. The kingdom is getting richer because of that. And uh, uh, because the people, uh, uh, if you read Second Chronicles chapter thirty-one, uh, on the last verses, uh, verses twenty, uh, this is what Hezekiel did throughout Judah, doing what is good and right faithfully before the Lord his God. Everything that he undertook in his service of God's temple and in obedience of the law and the commands, he sought his God and worked wholeheartedly and so he prospered if you read chapter 31 uh, verses 20 and 21 he did what was right in the uh, sight of God in order to do that uh, he took I believe he took some ex examples from his great 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 grandfather that is David what he has said because David was a man after go man of God's own heart and uh, if you want to please God, it is not an easy task. Uh, and uh, it is, you need to have a personal, very much personal relationship with God, unless until you can't please God. 
And this is exactly what Ezekiel tried to do and he succeeded. And then God, uh, there was a spiritual revival happening. He, he, he uh, and God's, God has seen what his people has done wholeheartedly and he prospered. God blessed them abundantly there. And that's what we read in verses one and two, uh, Psalm 76 verses one and two. And then one, one other thing happened. Uh, we, can, uh, we can relate that as well. When we are born again in, today, today, uh, in today's uh, scenario, when we are born again, we are very much in line. We are uh, pumped up spiritually. And what happens during, the, this, uh, during this time is that Satan, uh, he never stays uh, the way he is. He, he sees that there is something very much special happening with, with the children of God. And then he started to he starts to come blazing with all the fires, bla with blazing at us, and that's what exactly happens. Verse things cha change very quickly from verse six, seven, Psalm chapter uh, seventy six, verses uh, three and four. Uh, things are very different. Uh, you see, uh, when they are all blessed and uh, things are going smoothly. Uh, there is uh, this Asherian king, he comes and attacks them, uh, send her in, he comes and attacks them. And that king is very wicked. He's renowned for his wickedness. His army is renowned for his wickedness. He's very powerful. And then, uh, and then Ezekiel is back to square one again. Uh, but then he gets strength. Uh, from the scriptures, he gets strength from the scriptures. He go back. He goes back to the to his place of worship. He's uh, he's he, he's talking to his ministries. He's talking to his people back again. And then uh, we can uh, read one of his close uh, uh, priest, that is uh, prophet Isaiah, is there. He's 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 uh, in in line with prophet Isaiah and. Uh, He's going back to him and consulting him. Is speaking to him. They are praying together, and uh, he, they are. Uh, and, and the situation now is very different. Uh, the the Sanhedrin, the that that king sends threatening letters to 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 Asaya, and he fortifies this town all together from all the areas. And then he sends threatening letters saying that what I have done to other kingdoms, how I I have. Uh, defeated them. Uh, you also uh, would be uh, seeing the same scenario before uh, coming to the same thing. The king, the people of the uh, now of Judah are very much threatened, and they are very, very much frightened at this scenario. Um, but the king goes back uh, to to Ishaya, to the temple. They started praying together, hand in hand. They lay down the letters of Saint Herodian before God. Now God uh, is coming to the picture back again. He he listened to the prayers of the uh, of Isaiah. He listened to the fasting prayers that Ezekiel is doing there. And then uh, you see there's a judgment that is proclaimed from the kingdom, that is proclaimed from the kingdom up in heaven. And God is there in this dwelling place. God is there in the Judah. He's seated there. He's in control. The, we In other translation, when I read, he, we, I can read that he's like uh, sitting there as a lion of Judah and ready to pounce back. He sends one of his angels. He's, uh, that's not an archangel, just one of his angels in the night. He sends one of his angels pronouncing the judgment, giving instructions to none, none of the other people, just to the angel what to do. And when we read in the book, Second Chronicles in the book, 185,000 soldiers has been killed in the Assyrian camp in the night without taking once one blade on the, from the Israel soldiers. None of the Israel soldiers done anything. The, the, the instructions were given to the angel and he did the job. 185,000 soldiers were killed. There was chaos in the Assyrian camp and they had to retreat back. Judgment was pronounced. And then as of rights here in words uh, three to six, there he broke the flashing arrows, the shields and the swords, the weapons of arrows. You are radiant with light, more majestic than mountains rich with game. The valiant light plunder. They came basically to plunder the, the kingdom of Israel. They know what was there in the kingdom. And they basically came to steal. 
steal and take it away uh, like uh, and it's it's it, it happened the other way around the valiant life plunder they sleep their last sleep no one of the warriors can lift their hand out of the ray book god of jacob both horses and chariot chariot lie still it is you alone to be feared who can stand before you when you are angry so they came with all their arms they were, they came with blazing guns whatever they they can take and then in the night things changed very quickly god sent an angel and judgment was pronounced there judgment judgment was given to so what basically ezekiel did with isaiah that changed the course of, of them they were having a very much hostile situation before them as soon as they were spiritually blessed spiritually uh, spiritually fed very well the devil attack the devil attack from all the four corners and they were much stronger they were given threatening letters here back and forth and they were examples given set by the sanhedrin king what to be done and then he went back to his place the dwelling place of god they started they laid before them whatever they had they laid before the letters what the sanhedrin king was given and ishaya and ezekiel they both started to they both started to pray together they were rallying in the prayers and god delivered the judgment we can see the judgment of god there when we give time to god when we put our things in front of god there's a judgment that take place and when the god is anger again on against the people who are coming for his people and the judgment is very strong and we can read in that i'm going i know i'm going very fast but in the lack of time uh is what we can do it best for here and when we read psalm 76 uh 7 it is you alone who are to be feared who can stand before when you are anger the people around israel they were fearing the king who was attacking them they feared the soldiers who were attacking them they feared the things that were sent out to them the letters that were sent to him sent to them when at this time when we are born again christians we fear the devil the, the, the we fear the 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 wickedness that that he comes up with we fear the lie he 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 says to us some of the other way he attacks us some of the other way he sends fear to us some of the other way he sends lies to us so many ways he can attack us not like he won't attack uh, uh like like a person but in so many other ways like for our with our health with our with our with our finances with our family with our uh with our jobs with various situations he attacks us and when he attacks us we has we have to know the truth what jesus has given know the scripture exactly what it says understand the scriptures and to understand the authority that god has given to us understand the authority in the scriptures that christ has given to us this is very powerful scriptures that christ has given to us in order to understand we have to exercise the scriptures that christ has given to us and when we ex- exercise the scriptures when we understand and exercise the scriptures god knows exactly what he has to do he will give the judgment on on the situation and once the judgment is done the results are very clear and it will very much favorable to us that's what we can see that's what asaf writes in words verses 3 and to 7 and in the 7 he writes it is you alone who are to be feared who can stand before you when you are angry when the heavens are pronounced the judgment and the land feared the judgment is given in heaven it's not in the earth the judgment is there because it is given in heaven and the land just hears it and the fear is there in the land and it the land was quiet nobody can utter anything when the angel was uh, doing the things at the assyrian camp and when you god you rose up to judge you save the afflicted afflicted of the land and that's that's how it is and uh, when uh, when we read uh, isaiah chapter 37 uh, verses 14 onwards how uh, isaiah uh, did his prayer in in the temple bef- uh, and along with isaiah uh, ezekiel king was also there they both were together what we can learn from this uh, understand and learn from from the small uh, uh, chapter is that 
uh, the angel of the god he came and he killed the kill all the soldiers and then he the lord pronounced the judgment the lord rescued the people and uh, and Uh, and the uh, and the uh, and all these uh, things happened when the, the the people of the god were sincere to him uh now uh, we read further uh surely uh, your wrath against mankind brings you praise and the survivors of your wrath are restrained uh, and uh, sometimes it also is that god's judgment and uh, uh, god's wrath is restrained to a certain exchange it also gives uh, his people some some time to uh, to come back to him to be uh, to to uh, to uh, uh, what you say to uh, to look back to their sins and to come back to god uh, it it's not like uh, when jesus christ was crucified all the mankind was subject to his wrath but he gave uh he restrained his wrath uh for his grace so that we can repent or uh, repent uh, on our sins and come back to them so he uh, as of says uh, surely your wrath against man can brings you praise and uh, and surely all of the wrath are restrained so god uh does not only gives a judgment but he also restrains his wrath to the mankind he also restrains his anger because he he gives us time to uh to to look back to our sins and to come back to him and to come back with repentant hearts before before him and uh, during this time uh, if if we have made vows to him uh, he the psalm 76 verse 11 uh, uh, as of says make vows to the lord your god and fulfill them let all the righteous Uh, let, let all the neighboring lands bring gifts to the ones to, uh, to the one to be feared if we had if we have made any vows uh, vows or made, made any commitment to god this is the time uh, to bring it back to them to bring it back into in before the temple of god uh, whatever uh, we often uh, uh, forget the vows we have made uh, but uh, as of reminds us at, at this time that whatever uh, vows we have made uh, when we were in a difficult time when the god was rescuing us we have to remember them and uh, we have to bring back we have to uh, keep keep our commitment back with god so so that uh, god has rescued us we also have to give back to the god so whatever uh, commitment we have give we have made whatever plans we have committed to the god we have to bring back we have to bring back to the tithes we have to bring back the commitment we have to bring back the things we have agreed before god that we have to do we have to do it back so that uh, asaf is uh, writing over here uh, let all the neighboring lands bring gifts to the one of to be feared and then the last word he says he brings the spirit of the rulers he he, he breaks the spirit of the rulers he is feared by the kings of the earth surely uh, uh this is a judgment we can see how uh, god has uh, as uh, king hesekiel uh, rallied before his people he he opened the doors he restored the the worship places and uh when it when the kingdom was attacked he 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 went along with along with ezekiel uh he went back to the temple they 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 both prayed and how god uh given the judgment to the to the people of israel how he rescued them without even taking one uh one sword without uh one of the uh one anyone uh going for the battle and it surely it says one who is in you is more powerful than the one who is out uh the the thing is that the born again christian uh when we are uh in the spiritual realm the battle is is with the fallen angels we don't have any match with satan because he is a fallen angel and we are human beings but we have to understand and exercise the authority that jesus christ has given once we exercise that the more uh, the authority is more powerful because one who is living in us is more powerful than one who is against us but in order to do that we have to exercise the word that he has given to us and the word is more powerful and we have to exercise it in our daily life and say uh, and that's what exactly in this chapter uh, as of writes to us who is to be feared 
uh, it is you alone who are to be feared who can stand before you when you are angry once the god he is there he is judging us based on the uh, how whole heartedly we are worshiping him based on how consecrated we are we are uh, we are in our hearts how purified we are hearts in our hearts are so i hope uh, 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 you, you you are blessed with these words and please thank you pastor thank you church for giving me this a uh, time uh i asked the church to remember us in prayers